And uh, the Labour Party's candidate has given a major speech at London's prestigious uh, think tank, Chatham House. Uh, Peter Obi has support uh, from many of Nigeria's young people, but critics and opponents say he lacks enough backing uh, from across the country to become president. He spoke about insecurity, healthcare, and the proscribed separatist group, IPOB, among other things. I spoke about Biafra being ended 53 years ago. It's all over the place in this space. I condemn all agitators, but in condemning them, you have to look at what brought about this agitation all over the place. It's not only IPOB, we have Yoruba Nation movement. We have all sorts. When you have created this level of massive poverty, where 63% of your population is poor, you're going to create all sorts of problems. I was speaking to a British minister this morning. I said we have about 40% unemployment. And we have about 60% youth unemployment. Young people in their productive age doing nothing. If you have 15% unemployment in Britain today, you're going to have massive, remember, agitation. Nobody will be able to leave his house. <laughs> so what you have seen is a creative effect of leadership failure over the years, which will be solved by good governance. When people start seeing justice, fairness, an inclusive government and doing the right thing, all those things will start reversing itself. You have heard them say we don't have structures. That is the structure we're trying to destroy. Structure of criminality. That is what I mentioned. That Nigeria is being held captive. That structure is structure that impoverished Nigeria. We will dismantle it. It will not be there. I assure you of that. We're going to turn around the power sector. Nigeria generates about Today, 56,000 megawatts of electricity for 200 million people. And South Africa, the second biggest in terms of economy in the five continent. Five to 6,000. Uh, five to 6,000, that's been five to 6,000, sorry. And South Africa, the second biggest economy, 60 million people generates about 40 to 50,000. And South Africa, in the past three months, has declared emergency in power and said anybody can generate up to 100 megawatts without license. So somebody who is 60 million, generating about over 40,000, declared emergency. What do you think somebody with 2 million people generating 5 to 6,000 will do? What? I'm going to declare war on power and I'll solve it. Presidential right. candidate of the Labour Party, Peter, will be speaking at Chatham House mm. earlier today. Well, Arise News analyst Dr. Sam Amadi joins us now to dissect that out in by Peter Obi today. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being on the news tonight. Good May to I start you. by asking you what's your take, your general overview of that mm. outing, and perhaps to start where he stops there, mm -hmm. um, talking about power. And I know that you've been part of power in Nigeria. When he says, you know, um, the structure of criminality will be dealt with, he will declare war. Did you hear the how, the practicability, and is it doable? Because we've, subsequent government has promised Nigerians mm -hmm. we will fix power, mm -hmm. we will declare war, we will do everything, you will have power. But we are here. We don't have enough power. Thank you. Well, let me start by saying it was a fantastic outing for Mr. Peter B. Mm -hmm. Clearly, um, I think it's better in the quick question and answer even more than the presentation and mm. was calm was uh, presidential was articulate again he talked about power now you know this, this mistake that the, why we don't have power is because we have a cabal mm. uh, where generators and all that mechano and all that that's not really correct I, I always say that look when I was next chairman I didn't see any fury of uh, cabal in terms mm. of generation if they are cabal mm. they are policy cabal the okay. bureaucrats who right. are failing in their work. So I've, I've read Peter B's uh, 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 manifesto, mm -hmm. and I've read uh, Tika Obaka, I've read Tinebu. I, I think Peter B's how-to is very clear there. And all of them, all of them talk about, you know, leadership issues, private sector investment, mm -hmm. 
macroeconomic policy. But I think the diagnosis that P2P also captured is, and is, is the fact that you need to first think deeply mm. about the crisis before waging war. Right. So it's very correct. It's going to wage war. <laughs> but of course, uh, Chatham House is not a place for the, the details of how to. Yeah. But I think what came out clear is the understanding that this is now a case of crisis. If South Africa would two or would have fifty thousand on average power mm. for less than sixty million people. Declared an emergency. Emergency and now mm -hmm. they are in fact in, in distress Fantastic. to thinking about mm -hmm. changing their game. Okay. Nigeria should actually be waging war. I think that's the key note. But the how to will be is captured in it's policy manual. And again, it's about self interest. You see, when you have leaders who are who are doing some special interests, mm -hmm. conflicted, who are corrupt then it will be difficult to solve problems. So mm. a, a government that says we're going to fight corruption, a government that is priding itself on probity, mm. stands more chance of doing that. But hmm. getting back to his game, to his speech, I think right. it was fantastic. I think the Apple, well, Apple okay. Yes, and you, I would actually allow you to address his response to the question of IPOB and mm. other mm. Uh, agitators. But do you think his overall performance on a scale of zero to 10 would sway those who may still be, uh, you know, thinking, should I go this way, should I go that way, the undecided. How much, you know, okay. if impact was, do you think it will make on that particular group of persons? Political theories tell us that people vote mostly from policy and identity. Mm -hmm. For they say, what identity? What kind of people are we? So right. with that, uh, sometimes people gloss over policy. Mm -hmm. But what I think is that if there are persons who are watching P2B and saying, can this guy really be presidential? Can he get his job done? Or have doubts, sit, 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 fences, what were the fence? Mm -hmm. This performance today will probably sway them. And again, uh, what I see most and I like is the fact that there's something that um, Jim Collins talked about, the, uh, the level five leadership. Right. Humility and firmness. Mm -hmm. When you talk about fighting this, you see the element of firmness and right. fierceness. But you see the element of humility about learning, mm. about working together. So I would think that if the people are doubting his articulacy, doubt whether he understands the issue, whether he has the capacity. Now, look at the question I answered about. The question of the National Assembly, Go, for example. Go, I'll come to that. Yeah. Right. I mean, he was asked how on earth he would perform with a National Assembly. That, that would probably not, not be controlled be, by his party. Yeah. And I think he gave a fantastic answer. I said, look, people have thought about it. See, a leader must be someone who builds coalition. We learn from L.B. Johnson, you know, about the master of Congress. Mm. But Peter says, look, if, you are, if your policy is not self-interested, if you are inclusive, if you are constitutional, if it's not and if you are not transactional, then you, you have deflated 80% of the reason why you are going to be ganged up against. Mm -hmm. I, I was speaking at the National Assembly, and I can tell you that one of the things that trigger this is a sense that the executive is taking and we're not taking, number one, mm -hmm. corruption on the license. The second is special interest, where you are skewing policy, to either favor your partisanship, your political party, or your ethnic geopolitical belonging. So Peter answered the question where I said, look, once you do the right thing, mm -hmm. once you can communicate a sense of national unity mm -hmm. and, and the direction, the reformist direction, and people see that this is not about self-seeking, they are like, but they are reps of the people. So his answer is very simple. I can even go there as a minority president. Mm -hmm. As long as I can generate that consensus mm -hmm. and not be self-interested, or partisan to favor Labour Party, I can generate enough consensus to drive a agenda. I think that's the right POB was really the tricky word. Mm -hmm. And I think his answer is very clear. People have accused him, of course, you know, not attributing not But right. I think he has really condemned. But he said, look, look at what he said is important. And that's the problem. We have too many agitators and disenchantment mm -hmm. because the landscape is so unattractive. If you have city percent poverty, so his answer is simple. First, deal with fix the country. Mm -hmm. You fix the country, then you don't need to criminalize everybody. Then you have the fridge that is cannot be persuaded. Mm -hmm. Then you can zero in on them. With. But if you are yeah. having a whole swath of discontentment, everybody is an agitator for one or another. It's it's not a kinetic issue. It's not about drive the forces and crush them. And that's why we're failing. Mm -hmm. It's about rebuilding trust. It's about getting people to work and have Invest, invested commitment to their country. Mm -hmm. And so I think Peter's answer is, look, we shouldn't be talking sabaratly. We're talking about kicking everybody's ass. Yeah. Let's talk about creating opportunity for some people. Let's talk about creating 
shared ownership country. Mm. Let's do the social discontent and then let's fix the economy. Then we may take out head of about 50% of the crisis. So we cannot go back and say our borders are porous, we, our military needs to be rebuilt, we need to have more police in the, in the cities, yeah. and we need to address this issue. So Indeed. the answer, I think, is top grade. Yeah, he talks about it, building inclusive, transparent, compassionate society, mm -hmm. and that will quell ethnic tensions. Absolutely. But some would say, you know, these are all fantastic mm -hmm. on paper, theory, but in practical terms, given the complexity of Nigeria, Nigeria. as a country, uh, you know, multi-ethnic, multi mm -hmm. religious yep, country, yep, yep. especially going back to the National Assembly. We've heard, for instance, the PDP talk about building a government of unity. I think it's something Mr. Obi has also he mentioned, also reiterate, reiterate you know, building point, yeah. a government of, of unity because mm -hmm. I may not be able to have that. Um, will, it be, will it then be as simple as it says to say, you know, you don't need to worry as long as you do the right thing and pursue inclusive government with the legislature being on your side. Is it as simple as that for it, a country as Nigeria? Cannot, cannot and then he talked about um, foreign direct investment, which I also know that you're very vast in when it comes to economics. He right. used the be and un honey uh, I, approach. Well, approach, yeah, uh, the, you know, the, yeah. ideology. Uh, mm -hmm. It says fix the country. They'll come, the, the economy. they'll come running. And the bill will come running. I think um, the, the ambassador who, ex-ambassador who spoke was very clear that, look, uh, he loves the country. This is a country with great potential. Yeah. But look, we know that investment is shy. Mm -hmm. Investment doesn't like crisis. Investment likes value. Investment also thrives where your best people are in-house. So if you're going to fix Nigeria for investment opportunities, retain the skill sets that are here. Don't allow people to live at the contract of frustration. Mm. So Nigeria is, is built to harness those investments. But Peter was very clear what he says, look, yes, we can get it done if we restore credibility. I mean, did that speech, and hopefully the one that Jega will give tomorrow mm. or so, and the one that uh, the NAP, NAPP guy gives, Conference if, also, yeah, Conference, so if they all build up to this level, mm -hmm. we've done a lot to clean up Nigeria image. You see, the global branding is part of commercial access and mm -hmm. sources people use, your image creates a degree of acceptability. Right. I think Nigeria's crisis is that, look, yes, we're not going to hope everything on foreign investment. Look, national investors will drive this country and bring foreign investment. And he made a very strong point yeah. about the rule of law Absolutely. and providing that regulatory environment for whether you know, certainty, local investor... For, uh, you yeah, know, because if the, the, if the locals can invest mm -hmm. in this economy, mm -hmm. foreigners will come. So rule of law is critical. The uh, regulatory certainty is critical, but at the heart of it all mm. is fixing state society relationship. This is a country that is more of predatory state, more of new uh, patrimony, where people like share the estate. Mm. He talked about it, retrieving it from the elites who have captured the state. A mm. captured state can never be a modern economy because modern economy thrives on ethical individualism and meritocracy. Right. These norms have no respect for prerogatives. So you can't be a thriving economy if you don't fix the social value crisis mm. and you don't fix the sense of what are we, who are we? Mm. Are we a neo-theocratic neo, neo, neo mm -hmm. ancient society, society that's full of privileges, cop-outs for royalties and ethnic warlords? Mm -hmm. Or are we a modern state characterized by ethical individualism and egalitarianism and meritocracy? Mm -hmm. So there will be an ethical or tenable crisis who wins power is to remodel the country. And I think what I see we'll be talking about is that there is now a contest, co contest between the young idealistic Nigerians, mm -hmm. and those who think that look structure, structure. I want to talk about structure. And he says they will dismantle that structure. Yeah, but structure reminds, structure is conservative. It means that look, there are some stickiness about this country. Mm -hmm. We are sticky in the mud. We, that's the structure. But this is the age, the age, age of agility age of new thinking. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, I talked about what's happening in the African landscape. Mm -hmm. you know, we see smaller parties coming to power. Mm -hmm. The question is, can it happen in Nigeria? Maybe, maybe not. B but the message that's not lost is that, look, these changes, demographic shifts, mm -hmm. and economic shifts. And, and numbers don't lie. Shift. He did talk about 12 exactly. million additional voters, voters and the young mm -hmm. people it's, showing interest. It's a evidence that's now a busting. You mm -hmm. know, something is trying to break out, You're which right. is okay. the new idea of a new Nigeria. Whether it will be or Atiku or Tirubu or Kokwanso will bring it or, or show whatever as we see. Mm -hmm. It's now a matter of, of details. But the reality is, this country is at a, a tipping point where we could actually usher ourselves into a new beginning, new start, start off again, redraw the country with electricity, utilities, economics, social security. 
we need a new well the question would be newness. whether nigeria is ready for that new beginning well the, the numbers <laughs> of the pool will well, tell we'll us go to the polls. <laughs> we'll have to leave it there dr sam amadi a delight to have you as always on news night arise news animal